Hello and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. You join me tonight on another painting workshop with Pascal and this evening he shall be working on the Akarian Harpy from Into the Unknown's Aeon Trespass. If you are brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the latest miniature painting and tabletop gaming videos. Also, don't miss the live Twitch channel weeknights Monday to Thursday from 7 o'clock BST. Click the link below. And now, on with the show. So, good evening, Pascal. Good evening. Hi there. How are you doing? So, uh, shall I start off? Yeah. What, what are you going to do tonight? Then? What are you going <laughs> okay, to amaze do this. us with? Right. So, um, thanks for being here, first of all. And um, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce something new. Uh, previously, I've been working on a bust, as you know. Uh, but this time, I'm going to work on another model because I'm going to do two projects at the same time. Um, and this is the Icarian Harpy from, um, um, help me out here. Into the Unknowns, Aeon uh, Trespass Into the Unknowns, sorry, Odyssey. I got a complete, complete blank. Um, and this is really, really a freaky model uh, because it has all kinds of stuff in there. It's not just one creature. It has uh, parts uh, bird, parts human, parts uh, octopus. Um, and it's all mumble jumble of it all. Uh, so it's it's going to be um, a really interesting project to do. Uh, and so I'm thinking of doing something really exciting with this, uh, especially, uh, which I'm going to try to show tonight. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show uh, a bit of flesh painting, which on itself is not very uh, particularly uh, special, maybe, because you, you've seen me do uh, flesh before. But this time I'm going to approach uh, painting it very, very differently. Um, I'm envisioning the, the skin of this creature to be very pale, right? And whenever your skin is really pale, it shines through, and you can see the uh, underlying uh, layers of uh, flesh and veins and etc., etc. So that's uh, that effect I'm trying to um, uh, create, recreate here. Uh, and this is actually an experiment for me myself because I've never done this before. I've envisioned it in my head uh, how I should approach it. And I think it is uh, um, really the, the right way to do it. Um, I've been looking up examples of how this has been done. And um, I've come to realize that Chris Clayton actually uh, does something similar. Uh, obviously in a much, much better quality than I'll pr probably do, but um, it's going to be something that he's going to do. So let me break it down first, okay? Uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to paint uh, the underlying layer first. So it's not going to be the flesh, the, 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 the skin layer, but I'm going to paint the, uh, the vascular layer. I think that's the correct word, where you can see the veins, where you can see all those really weird spots of reds and, and pinks and a bit of purples in there. Then I'm gonna paint the veins in where I think they're gonna be uh, showing. Uh, and after all the, uh, that is done, um, then I'm gonna glaze in the skin on top of that. If you've seen my uh, uh, tutorial on Cosmo, right, with the dome, uh, you could have seen something similar because I've been working there in three layers. Uh, doing the very lowest layer first and then working my way upwards. Something similar is going to go on uh, in here. All right? Sounds amazing. Um, I, and <laughs> I really hope it's going to work. So let me switch off to my other camera. This is my uh, freaky model. Here you see uh, definitely some kind of bird face with a beak-ish, uh, but still some tentacle mustache there. Uh, and here's the human part, the arms and this one leg. Um, he doesn't have to appear to have another leg, which is only the tentacles here. Obviously the wings and the feathers and uh, all it's a real mumbo jumbo. And I can actually envision uh, playing with a lot of color in here. Uh, I'm gonna mainly um, focus on this leg only today because I'm not sure how long I'm going to take uh, just doing the leg. So I'm going to do everything with the leg and especially the last um, part where I'm going to glaze in that skin layer. 
uh, I'm probably gonna take a lot of time in there. So I'm not gonna do the arms at the same time. I'm gonna do them off camera uh, in my own time, obviously. This is, this is a really cool model. What do you think? It, it, as, you, as you described it, it is a freaky amalgamation of so many things. It's hard to describe it, isn't it? Indeed, indeed. It is. Um, I've done a, um, a two color priming, uh, obviously black first, because if I keep it like this, you see a lot of black here uh, and white on top, but I've mainly focused also uh, the skin parts, a lot of white in there. This is why there's just gray in here on the leg instead of more more black tones because I want that leg to be really pale and I want the focus to be really down here. So for the first layers, I'm going to use uh, an assembly of some, some darker reds, uh, but also a bit of purple in there just to tone it down, to cool it down a bit. Uh, uh maybe in some areas it should rather uh, make it more warm so there's the the uh, what do you call it more reddish red in there and then the blue is uh, specifically for the veins and i'm probably gonna mix the purple and the blue together a lot All right obviously there's black and white in there for darkening and uh, highlighting a bit or even um uh, especially the white adding the white is will uh uh, pastel the colors a bit more right then after that's done i'm going to use these two colors uh, for my skin color uh, uh, skin color which is um, uh, model color salmon rose which is one of my favorite skin colors and uh, light flesh and gonna do uh, probably gonna do the light flesh first and if there's any part that should be a bit more pinkish a bit more flesh like then i'm going to use the salmon rose these are the colors uh, laid out for me and this is what i'm going to play with i'm going to put on uh, some colors there i'm uh, going to try to keep it pretty cool even though i'm using reds here i'm trying to um, incorporate a lot of blue into these colors it will turn out pretty pink uh, sorry pretty purple uh, but that's okay the first step i'm going to do is um i'm I'm going to try to uh, build up some uh, some spots, you know, um, if you look at my hand, I hope I, you can see it, you see these uh, lighter spots and darker spots, which uh, you can see, there. I hope you can see it really well. This is just light spots, darker red spots, yeah. which make up my, uh, so these spots I'm going to try to recreate first before starting on the veins. I hope you can see the uh, mixing on my palette as well. Yeah, I'm cool. trying to get a really runny, uh, thin, thin kind of paint. And I'm only going to do stippling. Firstly, I'm going to concentrate on where uh, where the shadow should be. And I'm, uh, on purpose, I'm going to leave open some spots because th these are the white spots I just uh, showed you. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna add some more blue. I think those really darker shades are. Uh, it should be much much colder there. I'm almost painting here. Um, it's really dabbing it. It's not. Um, I'm not really trying to pinpoint where I'm. Uh, I'm needing to do, put my brush down. It's creating uh, like a texture, and that's really chaotic and and, and rough. I'm going back and forth between the, the reddish and the, the bluish tones. And the thing is, if you're doing this correctly, uh, at this stage you might think, well, that's that's looking blotchy and weird and, and not really, really clean. But uh, as soon as I'm going to do the, uh, the glazing later on, it's going to be faded a lot, uh, a lot more so that all the the, um, the inconsistencies and the imperfect imperfections are going to be gone much more 
it's actually those imperfections that make the skin really really interesting mm. I'm, uh, on purpose uh, making the knee a little bit more uh, red and and fixed in as, well as everybody knows your knees are a bit more red and this might even help me later on uh, so I'm going to do some darker shades first. Uh, I'm going to turn them much more toward the purples. This is actually just for the volumes, to just to create volume. This is not so much for uh, um, for the pattern, for the, uh, for the effect. Even though the uh, the skin's gonna be very pale, Vr very pale. <laughs> My pronunciation there <laughs> was a bit off. Um, that doesn't mean that the uh, the shades cannot be dark. Uh, and au contraire, the darker you can create those shades, the brighter the white's gonna look. All right. Let's create some lighter tone. This is like a like a pink. There we go. Now I'm trying to create those. Uh, like I left some white spots in there just to create some white spots there, uh, like I just shown on my hand. But I've got to color those in as well. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting because from the artwork, I got the impression that potentially it's a very colourful creature, but the art is very desaturated, isn't it? Right, exactly. And this this inspired me to do like this really pale parts, and uh, probably the the tentacles are going to be like this pink mm -hmm. that I'm I'm using right now, which is also a very pale colour. Uh, and then compare, uh, make the contrast with the feathers and, and create something like a, um, like a raven kind of feather. Oh, right, okay. There we go. Can do one, uh, one version lighter even. Uh, the weird thing uh, in, my, I, in my own painting process, uh, whenever I do something new, uh, or experimental. Um, I start off and I'm just sticking to the plan I had in my head. But as, a, as soon as I start, I'm doubting myself. And this is what happened just now. Um, doubting, is this the right way? Did I do it correctly? But as I progress further and further, I'm starting to see where it's going to lead up to. And I'm building up my confidence again. That's such a such a fun part of the of every painting process when you when you reach that point where you're confident that what you're doing is gonna gonna uh, gonna show up eventually. It may take some time, it may take some passes and and some some correction, and uh, but in the end, I think it's gonna be okay. When I do um, uh, workshop classes. I don't do them that much uh, these days anymore, but uh, sometimes when I do, uh, do classes myself and I've got this uh, group of um, mostly beginners and intermediates and that are painting there. Uh, one of my topics I always, always uh, talk about is, uh, is about motivation. So this is why um, talking about what I just felt and how I, um, how I built my, my own confidence up. Uh, is is very important to me to relay that to students. You know, um, it's not only about um, uh, keep on painting and keep on practicing, and uh, you'll get there eventually. Um, but it's it's much more than that. It's also thinking about uh, uh, believing in yourself uh, when uh, believing in the plan you've you've created for yourself. You know, trying to. Do something, you plan it in your head, stick to it, and believe in yourself that it's gonna work out. And as soon as you see it starting to work, 
be motivated by that. Do not take it for granted, but really be motivated by it. Okay, now I'm going to try to paint in some veins. I'm not going to do the entire vein, because you're never going to see the entire vein um, running up and down. I'm going to use just pure blue for this. Let me take that. I'm gonna wing this a bit like Bob Ross. <laughs> he can do this. Bob Ross is amazing in itself, uh, but every time he, when he does a tree that's uh, really in the front, and he's gonna uh, take a really fine tip uh, pencil like these we got, and then he's gonna, and th there's another branch on that tree, and <laughs> that's the part I really, really enjoy. Let's see if I can do that as well. So um, I've studied a little bit of anatomy, and so there's uh, there are two veins. There's one running through uh, on the inside of his leg, and one on the outside of his leg. And especially here on the upper thigh and uh, along the calf. This is this a calf? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and on the inside, on the same spots, that's where the veins are most visible. I'm gonna paint it somewhere uh, there. Too. And it doesn't matter that, it, that you cannot see perfect stroked uh, veins in there because uh, as soon as I start uh, the washing, uh, sorry, the glazing, uh, a lot of it is gonna gonna disappear anyway. But as soon as as long as you have the hint of veins running there. I'm gonna take it a bit more up in here, uh, and it may not be anato anatomically correct what I'm doing now, but it's um, because this might disappear a lot into the shades, and thus you may not see even that there are veins. So I'm gonna bring them up a bit more. I can uh, artist choice to create something that's actually not there. So, taking out the light, uh, light flesh color, um, which is really bright. Did you see that? This is this is the pink I created for earlier. And this is flesh, and uh, if I didn't have that white here, this would almost appear white. Yeah. Gonna take a big brush, and I'm gonna create a really runny. Kind of glaze. Do you see how thin that is? Yep. Right. I rather have this too thin, and uh, needing to do thrice the amount of work, uh, but still have the, the control over uh, how far I want to go, than that it's too thick and uh, I've undone everything I did. I'm gonna do a pass like this, and you hardly see anything. Mm -hmm. This is the real uh, time-consuming bit. I've got to make sure that the previous layer of glaze is dried out before I uh, go again. Or else I'm going to break it apart. So I'm going to do the upper leg first just to show you uh, after a while um, how much affecting effect it's going to get in contrast to the uh, the lower leg. Uh, and to show you um, that it's not a wash, you know, this is, this is in my opinion, uh, the difference between a wash and a glaze. Uh, a wash can be this thin as well. I could use this as a wash, but this is what I do when I use a wash. I'm going to load up the brush and just, just smear it all over. But in this instance, I'm going to load the brush and then I'm going to wipe most of it off. I'm going to have a damp brush instead of a loaded brush. That's it. And the best way to know if you've done, uh, done the correct um, 
what do you well, wetness or dampness is if i if i do this and i blow on it i can see it dry up immediately and you can already see the underlying uh, color starting to fade away starting to get there it's getting tedious already guys <laughs> This is going to be it for the next uh, hour and a half. <laughs> we're, we're miniature painters. We know all about patience and uh, watching things build up. What I could do is take a bit of this purple and add that to that. Salmon rose. There we go. And this would make, make for a nice um, uh, shaded color. I'm gonna add a bit of white to the um, lightest color, uh, uh, the, um, the light flesh. So I've got a really bright, bright, bright. Now I'm gonna be really careful for the chalkiness you spoke of earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put in some highlights. Now, even though I'm using a glaze, I still try to do some uh, like a stippling kind of um, movement, so that I still keep that, uh, that that texture in there. So this is the first part. And you can definitely see the difference between the top leg and the, and the lower leg. Let me yeah. Turn the light a bit. Let me see. So the fun part is this. Actually, I, what I would rather prefer is to finish the entire leg first, but I'm going to go for the r pure red. Really thin it down. I'm gonna get some color, some warm bloodedness into that knee. So do you see this is turning out just a little bit more pinkish than uh, than the other parts? Mm -hmm. And look at how red this red is. Yeah, yeah. But this is just the effect of really thinning it down getting it as a glaze and I can do that on certain other spots as well where um, especially where skin is being taught uh, is that a good word yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not too much Just putting in the, just some hints of that red uh, really is going to make uh, flesh come to life. This is a real hint. A lot of people say, oh, I want to have a, a cool skin. And so they're, they're building it up from uh, a pure blues. If you're not using any red in there at all, uh, it's going to be dead flesh. Uh, if that's what you're after, then it's okay. But as soon as you're adding in some red, it, the flesh is really going to come uh, to life. Got to be careful that uh, this side of the leg is going to be darker, obviously, because it's in the shades. But still have the impression of, uh, of that see-through skin that I did above. It's going to be hard. Nah, maybe not. Just a lot of purples. 
Uh, the thing is, maybe I didn't uh, explain this before. Um, when doing these glazes, uh, you can see me uh, pull the glaze towards where I want the most of the color to be. So if I'm uh, doing a, a glaze of like this, of, of a light color, I'm glazing it towards where, where it's the brightest. So this is the brightest part, glazing it towards that point. Well, yeah, um, I hope you guys also understand why why this is. This is not only because uh, well, it looks uh, looks good, but um, as soon as you pick up your brush, there's going to be a pool of, of paint where you left off, right? So if you're going to brush it towards, if you're doing a highlight, let's say a highlight, and you're brushing it towards a highlight and you're pulling it up there, then that's where your highlight paint is going to stay, and that's okay because it's going to be brightest there. You do not want to do it towards the shade and have a big blob of highlight in your shade color that's uh, that's going to be also awful of course if you wanted to see the uh concept artwork for the icarian harpy or any of the other miniatures from aeon trespass then it is as simple as exclamation aeon trespass you can see it scrolling uh on the little info bar Type that on in, go and follow the link and check out their range and you will be amazed and horrified in equal measures. <laughs> As I was. <laughs> <laughs> we promise you nightmares for months to come. And I think this is about it, guys. So Just a bit of fixing here. And this is what you can do with a lot of glazes. Look at that. Awesome. I'm going to post up the pictures uh, as soon as possible, probably tonight. In, uh, in, I think in th within 30 minutes. So imagine this all over these arms, uh, much of it as well on this, this chest cavity here. And uh, this arm as well, the neck. And this chest cavity is going to be, I think, really gory red in here. Maybe some bones. I'm not sure yet. So this is uh, my um, my tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to run you through it again. Uh, so first of all, I've used some darker red tones. I'm going to put them up back up here. Some darker red tones here and purples uh, to just do some stippling and uh, working in the, the spheres theory uh, already um, so uh, making it darker towards the, the shadow side uh, doing a lighter stippling on top and this is just the, the texture of the like you see in my hand uh, the texture of the flesh underneath my skin where you see all the blotchy dots and uh, darker and lighter spots uh, then on top of that, after I've done that, I'm gonna uh, I drew in some uh, veins where I thought uh, would be useful, and that was the basic uh, skin. Then after this, I just glazed in really meticulously uh, some light skin tone, uh, mostly undoing a lot of it, but you can still see that texture and see those veins underneath shining through. Uh, creating some uh, uh, darker tones with those uh, to blend it in much nicer and afterwards taking a bit of red pure red uh, make it really thin and just glazing those those knees in like so and you can make that as red as you want you can have it just a bit pinkish or uh, like this or just have another pass with it and make it a bit redder on the heels, on some points where flesh is uh, being stretched and pulled thinner and towards it, just to make it a bit more alive. And that was it. Thanks for watching, and um, I think this is me signing off right now. Okay then, well, thanks again Pascal, bye bye for now. Cheers, cheers. Bye now. All right then, so thank you so much everybody for joining us this evening, watching the workshop with Pascal. How amazing did that look? Uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow.
But until then, bye-bye for now.